There's a lot of mystery surrounding the masking plateau. What is it? What does it mean? What does a plateau look like and how do you create it? Theta has a tool that can show you the plateau as you're creating it so you can learn more about undermasking, effective masking, and overmasking. Let's show you an example in Theta. On the right of the screen, you've got unmasked air conduction and bone conduction thresholds for the left and right ear all on one audiogram plot. On the left side of the screen, you've got a masking plateau plot, which is going to plot the stimulus level and the masker level every time the patient hears the beep. You'll see what I mean as we get going. Let's look at 1000 Hz in the right ear by bone conduction. We got this unmasked threshold at 5 dBHL, but there's a significant air bone gap, which means we need to mask. For more information on masking for bone conduction, check out some of our other videos. We'll turn on the masker at the air conduction threshold of the non-test ear, add our 10 dB safety pad, and 10 dB for the occlusion effect since we're using super aural transducers for our masker. At this point, we're ready to mask. So let's see what happens on our plateau plot as we start the plateau method. We'll present our stimulus, and every time the patient hears it, we'll increase our masker, and every time the patient doesn't hear it, we'll increase our stimulus. So we'll present, and we got no response. So we'll raise our stimulus. At this point, the patient heard the response, so on the plateau plot, you'll see our first point is selected at 15 dBHL stimulus level with our masker at a level of 30 dBHL. Whenever the patient hears it, we increase the masker to cover the sound that crossed over back up. We get no response, and since there was no response, we don't get a plot on our plateau plot. So what happens when we don't get a response? We raise the stimulus and the patient responded. And now you can start to see the beginning of this plateau plot where we're drawing a, an increasing line in 5 dB steps. So now I'll continue and you'll see how this plateaus in just a second. We got a response so we're going to raise the masker and then our stimulus. Got a response so we'll raise the masker and we got another response at this point. So Whenever you get another response, you're going to raise the masker one more time. And you could raise the masker again. You'll notice in the plateau plot that we keep increasing the masker level, but the stimulus level doesn't change. At this point, we're fairly confident that the stimulus is being heard by the test ear because it doesn't matter how much we increase the masker, the patient is still hearing it. This is indicating that they're not hearing it in the non-test ear and that they are hearing it in the test ear. We can continue to raise the masker until we see a change in the plot. At this point, we presented the stimulus and we didn't get a response anymore. So what happens when you don't get a response? You raise the stimulus. So if we raise the stimulus, we get a response. So we raise the masker. No response, so we raise the stimulus. And so we raise the masker. Now something really interesting is happening here because you'll notice that at this point, our bone conduction threshold looks like it is higher or poorer hearing than the air conduction threshold, which shouldn't be possible. Usually if there's a gap, it's an air bone gap, not a bone air gap. So what's going on here? Well. At this point, the masker is so loud that the masker is crossing over into the test ear and it's covering up our threshold. So it's artificially elevating the threshold in the test ear. This is called overmasking. If you look at the plateau plot, the initial rise in the plateau plot shows undermasking, where you don't have enough masking to cover up the non-test ear effectively. Once you get enough noise in the non-test ear, you can increase the noise in that ear without affecting the patient's response. This is called the plateau or effective masking. At some point though, you put too much noise into the non-test ear. When there's so much noise in the non-test ear from the masker, the masker crosses over into the test ear and actually covers up the true threshold. And so when you can't hear the true threshold, you would raise the stimulus again, but this would take you past the true threshold, and that's overmasking. So a plateau plot is really useful for showing under, 
effective and overmasking, and this is why it's so widely used in audiometry for demonstrating the plateau method and these principles. I hope that helps you demystify the plateau a little bit. It's nothing crazy, it's nothing scary, and then you learn more as you do different kinds of audiograms about what makes the plateau width larger or smaller. I'm excited for you and your journey as you learn more about the plateau and how to effectively mask for your patients.